So it is Monday, September 10th. We are in Jamestown, New York. New York. We are another 260 miles down the road. Unfortunately today, we did not ride motorcycles. And although it looks dry where we're standing, it rained almost the entire drive here. So because of safety and washed out roads and a bunch of other things, the guys, Jason and the guys that run the Cannonball, uh, called it off today. Uh, everybody. <laughs> Tell me to smile. Uh, to keep, to keep, it, keep everybody safe. So we're here uh, and we are displaying the bikes at a local dealership uh, and uh, we're good to go. So what I wanted to talk about was last night after dinner. Uh, yeah, last mm -hmm. night after dinner we had a couple issues to sort out on the SS80. Uh, minor details, but the big thing was changing the main jet on the carburetor. Went slightly larger to richen it up a little bit. Right, yeah, so we, we felt the engine on this bike was running a little hot. Um, and one, on these old air cooled bikes, one way to really get them to cool down is to add more fuel, um, which sounds weird, but the fuel kind of acts as a coolant, and of course it burns a little bit colder, not as hot, I should say. Yeah, it cools the combustion chamber. Cools, cools combustion chamber. Yeah. So he, he put a larger jet in the carburetor um, to increase the fuel, and it runs just the same to me. Um, also, when you're doing the higher elevation mountain passes, tends to, uh, the air, you get less oxygen in the air, the higher you go, which means a leaner burn, which means a hotter plug, which means a hotter cylinder, which means the engine's too hot. Anyway, uh, so you did that, and then what else did you and do? And in addition to that, we lost our- oh, That's right, uh, we talked about that. Yeah, lost our gas cap, I watched together a screw. So he just swapped over the gas, this is the oil cap, he swapped over the gas cap and lever to this and bodged up the screw. Yeah, we didn't have a spare T-handle, so that'll work. Took a screw, filed it down, made it fit, sealed it up. Keep us on the road. And then you would do something else. What else is it? What else you did to it? No, that was it. That might be it. Uh, and then we put it in the trailer and dragged it this far. <laughs> Just went over the bike, tightened bolts all over it, uh, looked for any anything falling off. That's a really common issue. So, yeah, it, it only burned like a liter of oil or half a liter of oil. Half a liter of oil. Half a liter of oil, oil in like 250, 300 miles, which is not very much for a bike like this. The SS100 on the other, on the other hand, <laughs> did do a little more work too. Mm -hmm. So Paul rode the snot out of this bad boy. <laughs> rode the snot out of this bad boy, left Chris in the dust, because this bike has so much more horsepower uh, than the 80. Mm -hmm. And what'd you have to do to it? Uh, well, the good news is the tires stayed on yesterday. Yeah, it was no flats. We yeah, talked no about flats. that last night. Yeah. yeah, that made it through. Yeah, I was happy about that. Yeah, um, the big thing, the saddlebag yeah. fell off. We bolted that back on. Uh, just nice went tire. over. Yeah, <laughs> went over the bike. Another bolt check on it, um, and then found that all of the oil had leaked out of the engine. Uh, the oil tank was almost completely dry. Uh, and found our, our main oil feed line for the motor had come loose, um, or the lock nut had come loose, so there was a pretty significant oil leak coming there. Um, but luckily- Put two liters of oil back into it. Yeah, a little over two liters, two and a half liters back into the oil tank. Um, but yeah, it's a really robust engine design, roller and crank bearings, um, so it- I, We're a little concerned okay. because, I mean, we don't really know. The engine seemingly ran out of oil. And Paul kept going for how long? We don't know. Or mm -hmm. if it really was, it did have enough oil in the oil bag to continue to, to, to lubricate. It must have, because it would have burned up for sure. Yeah. But yeah, it would have gotten. So high. now, really, our concern is that tomorrow when he goes to ride this thing, he's going to blow it up. That and he intends to ride two up. Right. Paul's girlfriend with Susie on the back here. So we made this seat. We made this custom seat for the back for her to sit on it. Um, and because of the clincher tires, we're concerned about a blowout again. Um, so I'm just crossing my fingers yeah. that Paul can go a little slower. Hopefully he goes a little bit slower. And not hit any major bumps. Yeah. And crash the damn thing. I mean, a blowout doesn't always mean a crash, but it can. It can, especially when you're going like 70. That's true. What else? Everything, and then the, the, the technical part is that people need to understand is that like all the bolts and all the fasteners are rattling apart in the damn thing while he's riding it. So 
<laughs> Chris is famous here, if you haven't noticed. In his element, yeah, this, Chris is the most when, famous guy. When I wear a name tag, I'm really famous. When everyone knows, oh, you can't even see it, dude. Oh, okay. No, no, they all know who you are. Um, yeah, I like that, the, that this got nicked up. And it's back on. Did you put lock nuts or yes. at least nylon? Yeah, he's red Loctite on all the, the on all of it. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, this whole bike, uh, every every day there's something new that's falling off or coming loose. Uh, and even with Loctite on everything. So right now we're making declarations. The declaration is that we don't feel as confident about this one making the trip. No. This one at a slow and easy pace, I think, is has got a pretty good chance. No. So we'll see. I think that's enough for now. All right. Yep. We'll let you guys know what happens tomorrow.